Today I'm going to show you how to create this interesting animation with this grass growing on this sphere with these stones here. Um, it wasn't too difficult, it's actually fairly straightforward and it involves a lot of Voronoi. So I'll show you how I did that. I actually had to re-upload this video because I deleted a small portion. So if you're seeing this video for the second time, that's the reason. I'm going to delete that cube and bring in a UV sphere to work with instead. Enable that submenu and enable smooth shading through that. Then change this entire middle area to your shader editor. Hit N to get rid of that shelf. Let's add that material that was on our cube. Let's put it on our sphere. I'm going to change the top right to my 3D viewport. Just zoom in a little bit and scroll across the top. Turn off these overlays. We want to change from EV to cycles. So let's do that as well and change it from supported to experimental so that we can do the adaptive subdivision. And if you have a GPU, change it to that as well. I'm going to go to the modifier panel and add a subdivision surface modifier and ch uh, make sure adaptive subdivision is clicked as well. The last thing we need to do is come to the material properties, scroll down and go to settings. We're going to change it from bump only under displacement to displacement only and that should work. Just going to move this principled BSDF out of the way and bring in a Voronoi texture. This is actually going to be the basis for both our rocks and our grass. And while that's highlighted, I'm going to hit Control T, bring up the texture coordinate and mapping node, and just get rid of this mapping node. So I'm coming out of generated, which means my origin point is in the bottom left. So it's like 0, 1, 0, 1 uh, in all the coordinates there. Uh, so I could switch to object to get my origin in the middle, but there's another way to kind of mimic object while coming out of generated with a few vector math nodes. So I'm going to set that up. First one is uh, going to be subtract, and I'm going to set all these values to 0.5. And what that's done is it's made, you know, the middle zero now, and all the edges are 0.5. So if I set up a second one, change it to multiply, and change this to two, this is now zero to one on all the sides, and it's basically the same as if it were coming out of object, but now it's with generated. Then let's set up some displacement. I'll bring in a displacement node and just plug the Voronoi into the height and then make sure displacement is running into displacement and we can see it's displaced our sphere there and these aren't quite the shapes we want so I want to adjust these a little bit so I just want to change the shape of this Voronoi displacement and this next idea comes from watching a Link CG video he's uh, got some great content if you haven't checked it out so I'm going to bring in some math nodes to affect my gradient here let's see what this is doing I'm going to change this to subtract we can see it basically changes where that black area of my gradient gets introduced. I'm going to duplicate this and change it to power, and this controls the interpolation of my gradient. I'm going to leave this at 0.4. I'm going to duplicate this, change this to multiply, and set this value to 1. This just changes the speed of my gradient, but I'm going to leave it at a neutral number for now. Then I'm going to create a vector math node and just place it right here, change this to scale, and plug this into the scale there. And then I'm going to come over to the Voronoi, change this randomness to zero, and the scale, we're going to bump that up to 200. Let's look at our principled BSDF, and we can see it looks a lot more like grass already. If you orbit around this, you'll notice that it doesn't update the adaptive subdivision. You have to do that yourself. One of the ways is just by hitting tab twice, and it'll update for you. I'm going to come over here to right after the texture coordinate node and just add in a noise. I'm going to duplicate that and add in one more as well. I'm going to change this first one to 40 and leave that second one at 5. And then I'm going to bring in two mix RGBs and just place those after the two noises. I'm going to plug generated into color 2 of that first mix factor and then color output of that first mix factor into color 2 of the second mix RGB. This first factor I'm going to set at 0.98 and the second one I'm going to set at 0.9. So next I just wanted to create some areas where there isn't grass growing and where the dirt can show through. So I'm going to bring in a noise texture, place it here. Let's just run out of the color there. And I'm going to bring in a color ramp just to tighten it up a little bit. I'm going to bring this black level up to 0.4. We can see these black areas appearing on our object. And I'm going to bring in a mix RGB and just place it right here. I'm going to run this into color 2 and change color 1 to black and then run this into the factor. We can see anywhere that it was black on this color ramp is now a spot where grass isn't growing 
and it, it won't look like this in the final render it'll be much more detailed but it just looks a little bit blocky for now so we can change this around we can bring this black up create bigger bald patches there or change the scale as well to something like three you know for whatever desired effect we want I'm gonna leave it at three and point four there Next, I'm going to start creating those rocks. To save time, I'm going to grab a bunch of this all the way up to that Voronoi and hit Control shift d and that brings it down, duplicating it, but leaving it attached to that texture coordinate node. I'm going to change this first mix to 0.99, change this second mix to 0.95, and this Voronoi, I'm going to change the scale to 1 and the randomness to 0.992. Let's look at this Voronoi texture down here. I'm just going to bring in a color ramp here. Bring these in a little bit just so we can see what's going on. And uh, I'm going to bring in a noise texture as well to mix with this Voronoi. Let's run this into the vector and bring in a mix RGB. And we'll just run color of that noise into color 1 and then from the vector from that multiply into color 2. Let's set this factor at 0.95 and this scale on the noise at 20. Let's go ahead and bring in another mix right here and we'll just mix these two together. Let's bring in a color ramp, place it here, and I'm going to bring the black up to 0.19 and the white is going to come down to 0.82. Duplicate this noise texture and change the scale to 5 then come over here to the mix and change the factor to 0.6. Now we have uh, some more interesting stuff we're going to use for our rock texture. So I'm going to flip these around on the color ramp because we actually want those white areas to be extruding out and those black areas to be normal. We can add this to the displacement up here with a vector math node. I'm going to place that right here. Just leave it on add actually and just run this color ramp into this right here. So we can see the effect is, you know, it's much too drastic. I'm going to bring in another vector math node. Actually, just duplicate this guy. Change this to multiply. And I'm just going to set all these to 0.1, just like that. And uh, we've got areas where we want our rocks to be. We can kind of adjust that with this color ramp right here. I'd like to make it so that where the rocks are, there's no grass popping up through. So to do that, I'm going to try and create an exclusion map and just basically add it on to right here. So I'm going to bring in a math node. And if we look at this right here, we can see that the black is where it's not growing. So we need to create another thing off of here. I just hit Control shift d and that duplicated it while keeping it attached to this mix. And let's just look at this here. So where the rocks are, it's white. And we need that to be black. So uh, I'm going to flip these around. And now it adds up with this guy here. I'm going to change this to multiply. So basically anything that's zero is just zero on this entire map now. It looks like it worked. We can always fine tune it as we go along, but it looks pretty good for now. I'm going to duplicate this principled BSDF here twice because we're going to set up some materials here as well. Let's just put some placeholder colors in here for now. This is going to be the green for the grass. Then we're going to do the brown for the soil. And then the let's do just do a gray color for the rocks for now. You can start by mixing these together. I'm holding down control shift right click and dragging from one node to the other and it creates this mix shader node. Then I'm going to do the same thing so that these rocks are mixed last. For that first mix, I'm going to create a color ramp, place it right here, and run from this mix here that we created earlier into the color ramp. That black is going to stay where it is, but this white is going to come way down to 0 0.01. If we look at that, uh, it just looks like this right here, and we're just going to plug this into the factor right here. So let's just see what that looks like looking through this factor. Uh, it looks like it's done its job so far. All the grass is green, whereas the soil is brown. Next, I want to create a mask that separates the rock texture from the other textures. So I'm going to duplicate this one right here with Control shift d so it stays attached to everything. Then I'm going to plug that into this factor way up there. 
So just stretch that out here, plug it into the factor there. Let's see what's going on. Uh, it doesn't look quite right. I'm going to try swapping these two here. And it looks like that's fixed the issue there. So um, then let's come over here. Let's maybe make a little bit more exposed dirt with this slider here. Let's set it at 0.45. Then we can come down here, maybe tighten this up a little bit so that the dirt and rock are a bit more separated. Bring that black. Move this white up. I think something like this looks pretty good. We can always adjust that if we want. There, I'm happy with that. So you can see at the pole here, it's actually kind of stretching in. That's a result of me using the UV sphere. I'll see what it looks like when I render this out and if it looks weird at that point or at the bottom it might be more useful to use you know an icosphere or a cube and subdivide it smooth and then use that but uh, I'll just keep using this for now and change it if I have any issues related to that I'm gonna scale back the rocks a little bit because uh, they're kinda taken over I'm gonna come to this mix right before these three color ramps and just change this to 0.3 and then this color ramp that we have plugged into the vector multiply in the add that we're using for displacement. I'm going to come to this white value and just drag this down a little bit so it's more like an off-white, you know, a little bit more gray. We can see some of our grass is, you know, um, gray. So let's uh, change this color ramp around here a little bit too. Let's see what we can do about that. Yeah, that's looking better. And then let's come to this one here that controls the displacement. Let's just see if we can tighten up that uh, rock dirt boundary a little bit there. Yeah, looking much better. Next I'm going to start setting up these textures here. We'll start with the rock. I'm going to bring in a noise texture and let's just duplicate it. Set the first one to 40 and we'll leave the second one at 5. Let's mix these together here and uh, let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'm also going to run this right into that first one there. We'll just make sure it's coming out of color as well instead of factor. Just like that. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to run that into a color ramp place that right here. Let's just change this bottom color to kind of a dark gray and this top color to a light gray and then we'll move these in. Maybe something like 0.28 and 0.78. Then we'll plug this into the base color and uh, let's see what that color looks like. That looks pretty good so far. Let's duplicate this color ramp with Control shift d so it stays attached. Reset the color ramp and create a bump node. We'll just put that right here and plug color into the height. Then this normal into the normal on that rock. It's a little too powerful, so let's turn it down to 0.2. Let's see what this looks like so far. Yeah, rocks look pretty good. Um, might adjust it as we go. Those are kind of sticking out a little far there. So I'm going to come over here and just adjust this gray value again. Maybe turn that down a tiny bit. And move this a little bit. Next let's set up the dirt texture. I'm actually going to duplicate this entire thing and just put it right here because it's going to be kind of a similar process. Let's go ahead and plug this into the base color and the normal into here. But let's change some of these here. Let's change it to like uh, maybe 20 and let's change this as well to 0.7. And then we're going to change these colors as well here. Let's change this to a darker brown and then a lighter brown. Something like this. Looks pretty good. Let's zoom in there and uh, you know we can play around with these sliders a little bit, get the desired outcome there, and we could adjust this as well. But I think that looks pretty good at point two. We could drag these in if we wanted as well. But uh, that looks pretty good. Maybe drag this white down and black up a tiny bit. It's looking pretty good. The last thing I want to do is set up this color ramp. So I'm going to control shift D this Fornoy because this actually gives us a pretty good way to get a different color each time. 
I'm going to plug a color ramp coming from this color output of that Voronoi. We can see each blade of grass is going to be a different, you know, shade, uh, a different color basically. So we can use this color ramp here. I'm just going to start setting up some colors here. Maybe like this kind of green here, and then this can be this lighter green that I had initially on there. Let's plug that into the base color there and just see what it's looking like so far. So then what if we put, you know, something brownish or whatever, just to show some like dead grass. And uh, maybe put that at the bottom range here, something like this. So there's not as much of that, but there is some blades like that. Maybe bring this up here and just change this to another green color. You know, you can change it to whatever. Let's see what that looks like for everything there. You know, it's kind of hard to see what it's going to look like because it looks a little blocky. We can turn this down a little bit, the dicing scale, and it looks a little bit better. But uh, you're going to have to render it out to see what it's actually going to look like. Before I render it out, I also want to put in an HDRI. So I'll show you how to do that really quick. Come to the World Properties tab, and next to the color, it's got this yellow circle. You just want to click that, go to your Environment Texture, and go to Open and just select where you have some HDRIs saved. And if you don't have any, just go to HDRI Haven. There's a lot of free ones there. So I'm just going to do a random one, just random outdoor one. It doesn't really matter. Greenwich Park is probably a good one. And then I'm going to come down here to where it says Ray Visibility, and I'm going to uncheck Camera. So that makes it so that this is still lighting my object, but uh, you know I don't have it in the background there. And I'm also going to get rid of my original light there. So I'm just going to turn on those overlays, click that guy, and delete it. And let's click those off again and go into camera mode, or camera view. And I'm going to do a test render. After rendering it out, I made the following changes. On the displacement, I changed mid-level from 0.5 to 0, which made it a bit bigger, so I had to zoom out with my camera. And then I came over here to the color ramp that uh, we used for this exclusion map here with the noise texture and the multiply. And I changed this bottom one to 0.42 and this top one I changed to 0.6. I came over here to the Voronoi uh, that was 200 and I changed this to 100. I also came over here to the subtract node and I changed this to 0.6 just like that and then I came down here to this color ramp that's uh, separating the colors and I changed this to 0.4 then on this color ramp here, I changed it from 0.01 to 0 0.02. Uh, and then over here on the dirt texture, I made another color ramp that's just going to be for the uh, the roughness. I'm going to reset this and change this bottom gray to like a 0.5, just like that. Then plug this right into the roughness on this map here. I'm also going to come over to the ground texture and just change this mix from 0.7 to 0.9. I just like the look of that a little bit better. It just made it look a little less swirly for the ground texture. And a little bit different from the rock, so it differentiated it. And the last thing I did is I added in a translucent shader for the grass. This does increase your render time, and it's not really what I did in my original render, but I just had I just thought it would add a little realism to have a bit have a bit of subsurface scattering. So I'm gonna add a translucent node in there and then an add shader node. And I'm just gonna plug from that color into the translucent node into this add shader. So that just makes a bit of a difference there. Lastly for the animation I set it up so it was 40 frames long and uh, so I went to the end frame and I key marked this multiply where it says 1 just hit I over that while it's on fa frame 40 and you can just check that you did it correctly because this yellow diamond appears. Then I'm going to go to the first frame and I'm going to change this value to 0.01 and just keyframe that again. And I'm not going to vectorize it so that it's a linear interpolation. I'm just going to leave it as the curved animation interpolation. It's going to look a lot better. You're ready to render out your image sequence. So the way to do that, uh, you could leave it on PNG, but it's going to take a little bit longer. So I'm going to change this to JPEG and come over here to this little file folder. And you're going to choose the path where these images are rendered to. So I'm just going to go to tutorial 33 and I've just got a spot where the image sequence there. Might as well make a new one. Let's just try this is an example here anyways. I've already done it so I'm gonna put them in here and just hit accept. Once this is set up 
make sure you're constrained to the 40 frames you're animating in and hit Control F12 and it'll start rendering out your sequence. After rendering that out, I wanted to make one final adjustment. At the end of the sequence, the grass was a little too long, so I thought I'd come to this multiply node, and that controls the length of the grass. I've got it on frame 40, which is the final frame in my image sequence, and I'm going to change this to 0.225, and make sure you hover over this input field and hit I, and that'll capture the new keyframe. So now I'm going to render it again, see what it looks like. I've got my sequence rendered out, and I just want to co uh, create some duplicates of the first and last frame. I'm going to take the first frame, control C, then control V 20 times. Same thing with the last one. You can just get, grab that one, control C, and control V 20 times. Okay, now I'm going to go into Blender and go to a new project and go to the video editing interface. Don't worry about saving that uh, unless you, you need to. And I'm just going to add an image sequence and let's find that image sequence there. For me, it is under tutorial 33 and sequence 2. And just hit A and it'll select them all and add image sequence. And I'm actually going to duplicate it and place it right after here as well. And if your mouse is hovering over where you want it to snap it to, you can hold down control and it'll snap it in place. Then come over here to where it says video and select reverse frames while this second one is highlighted. I'm going to set the end to 150 frames and so when it plays through it's going to play through the sequence of the grass growing and then it's going to reverse it and not quite capture the end here so it's kind of like a pause at both sides. I'm going to come up here choose where to place this and I'm going to put it in tutorial 33 uh, just right here. Might as well stop that. And then come down here and select FFmpeg video and under encoding select MPEG4 and you don't have to do these exact ones but these are ones that I like to do they were pretty well then for output quality I like to choose perceptually lossless especially on something so small it's not really gonna make a big difference and it's just gonna up the quality a bit then when it's all set I'm gonna hit control F12 and it'll render out my sequence okay that's it I did skip over some things I've explained several times before but if you were confused about anything Feel free and let me know, and I'll see what I can do to, you know, clear up that confusion. Thanks for watching.